One of the innovative things that I like to do here at Kapolei Judo Club is I like to use all of the resources that we have available. And a very valuable resource, I believe, is the parents of the, the children who are taking judo. The parents may not know too much about judo, but they can at least go out to the mat and they can help supervise. It uh, relieves a lot of uh, time for the sensei to do other things. In, in, in essence, I can just look at them to ensure that they're doing the right thing and, and I, I don't have to go to the individual kids this way. Um, as you can see, uh, we have some parents. as well and they're just learning too, so they need to practice the throws just as much as the kids do. If, uh, the parents... I would say taking hold of this lever thing like this or taking hold of the elbow section of his sleeve. Diane, tell us, how can you improve your schoolwork? Okay, okay. on time, right? Turn your assignments in all time, right? All right, very good. Who can tell me what the next row is? No. You guys remember last practice, for those of you who were here, we said that whenever you throw, you need to consider the throw like a takedown. And, and you, you're not to just merely throw the person down and, and just let him fall, but you gotta throw the person down with the thinking that you're gonna follow through and you're gonna pin him. Okay, so we're gonna start that with this throw tonight, this ochigari. When you throw the ochigari, I don't want you to just let the person fall. I want you to complete the throw, land on the guy, and, and go into a pin so that if you don't get ipom, then, then you can get the rest of the ipom by pinning the person. Okay, so you gotta follow through. <coughs> Isaac and Zach, do it on this map. Do it on this map. And go into the pin. Yeah, okay, good. Exactly. Stand, stand a little bit away from the mat so that the, the, the foot can go through and, and sweep the. Get him to the pin. Get him to the pin. Okay, once more. Once more, both of you. Go right into the pin, all right? Complete the throw, follow through, and go right into the pin. Okay? From here on, you're to consider each throw like a takedown. You gotta complete the throw, and you gotta follow up with a pin. Okay, for now. Oh! <laughs> 
It's like a takedown. You're trying to take the guy down and you're trying to pin him, choke him, or arm bar, whatever your age allows, right? So you gotta be very good at pinning, choking, and arm barring, right? Okay, so it's very important that we practice a lot of mat work because that's where it all ends. Now, if you throw the guy and you get Ipong, then fine, then the match is over right there. But if you throw a guy and you get only Koka, Yuko, or Wazari, you shouldn't stop right there. You should continue on for the pin. Okay? Always going for the pin. So we need to keep on practicing our Newaza. So back to back, partner up, back to back. on their body. If you just go to the side, they're going to plop over. <clears throat> so, once you're in position, once you're in position, you're going to gut wrench. Now I'm going to back, then to the side. Back, then side. You see, came over. Then, the moment you get over, is I want to get my, my bottom leg out from under him. So, stay there. Stay there. See my bottom leg is under his head. Used to be under his shoulder blade. The moment we came over, I scooted my body here. Okay, why? Because how many of you have seen when the person does sangaku, they come over, this person bridges? Nobody. One of the one of very common is this person bridges. And the only reason why they can bridge is if my body, my leg, is underneath his shoulder blade, not bridge, he can bridge, okay? But if my leg is underneath his head, then putting up, now it's more difficult to bridge. So, moment you come over, leg out from underneath his body, okay? Okay, so, here, get in. Gut wrench, elbow, back, corner, then back. See, immediately I scoot my hip out. From here, don't worry about head. Most important is hook here. To here, and to turn your body in. Okay? Don't worry about head. Get to this position. Okay, everybody try. Grabbing, going, and rolling. It's, it's setting in correctly. Do different techniques to sit in. It's gut wrench, it's on the elbow, it's, it's the direction of your feet, and when you go over, you gotta get your, your, your underneath leg out. So these are all the little points that have to occur for Sangha to work well. The way, the training point for the instructors is this. When you do Newazu Uchikomi, and you're practicing these techniques, the way to do Newazu Uchikomi is to tell the uke to work 50%. Right now, I see everybody, the way most people do uchikomi, newazu uchikomi, is uke just goes over and lays there. Well, of course, you can do anything wrong, and you're still going to get it. But if you want to do newazu, you want to get strong in newazu, you want the uke to work a little bit, and that will force you to remember to do all the little things. Okay? So when you do newazu uchikomi, the uke, just don't go over, and over, go over and lay there and let them do anything. When you go over, work a little, scream, you know, 50%, 75%, let them get it but let them work for it. Then the tori, the person on top, will have to remember all the fine points and the instructors will come back and remind you. 